Okay, this is a short video de uh, dedicated to Ruhif. Ruhif is a smarmy, patronising, condescending prick on the uh, anti-flat earth side. He doesn't realise that he doesn't know everything about everything. Uh, but I do realise that I don't know everything about everything. So this is a request for further information from Ruhif, because he seems to be the font of all knowledge when it comes to anything to do with anything in this topic. Self-proclaimed, I might add. Obviously, the current buzzword at the moment is sextants. This year is all about sextants and we've been talking about it for a while. Sextants do not work on a globe for a variety of reasons, all of which are completely ignored by the anti-flat earth cult members. And today we're going to go through why, there, why this is an issue for the ball earth believers or the anti-flat earthers. Five slides, I'll be as quick as I can and we'll end up with a question for Ruhif. I expect a video response, Ruhif, because I want to see what you. I want to see you commit to something stupid. Slide one. Everybody thinks that when we measure out to the horizon at a star, uh, everybody thinks that we're going to measure like this. We're going to measure the angle to the horizon up to the star, get a value, and then you're going to go, great, we've got a value. But a legitimate question is, how do you get the GP distance, the distance from the observer on the right? There's Ruhif stood on the ball. Notice I've got the ball underneath him. How do you get the observer, how do you get the distance out to the horizon? Because that's the issue, isn't it? That, and that's a legitimate question. I asked that the first time I saw this issue coming up. I asked myself the same question. I knew eventually somebody would ask it, so I just bit my tongue and I waited to see what would happen. And eventually we're now at this point. And the issue is, when it comes to this first slide, is whatever you, point your, 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 whatever you set your baseline to, if we say you set it to your horizon, because that is what you do. But they say, well, you don't need the horizon, we set it to horizontal. So they ignore the horizon, and they set it to that. Well, if you ignore the horizon, then you haven't got accuracy with, with your measurements. Now, ultimately, they always say how important it is for accuracy. But I suppose you could say to them, well, I can understand that you don't necessarily need it. So at this point, the, um, you could set yourself, without having a, 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 a straight line to the horizon, you could set it to no horizon at all based purely on horizontal. Now, obviously, remember that there is no line of sight to the horizontal on their model that's straight because of 76R. The line out to the horizon or the set horizontal on their model, because you're looking through the optics of the sextant, is subject to refraction at the rate of 7, 6, 7 over 6R and is therefore a curved line. So their argument immediately fails. Okay? Everything on their model is a curve. It's applying curvilinear geometry, right? It's not applying Euclidean. There are no straight lines on their model. So they can't even do this when they try and set to the horizontal because their horizontal isn't a straight line in their model. Well, that debunks their model, doesn't it? Because they can't, they can't use a sextant for it. But anyway, we'll come back to that. But it is a legitimate question to ask, how do you get the, 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 um, the horizontal distance? And that, that is legitimate. So, we've been doing a bit of research into how celestial navigation is done using a sextant. And this is what they do. So if we look on slide two, to get around the issue of the, hor the horizon and the ambiguity that surrounds it on both models, what they do is, if you're, if you're on a ball, like, so, the, I know this is begging the question, but I've got to do it for their argument to show how it doesn't work for them. But it only works for us. But we've got Ruhif here, he's on the right hand side, he's on his ball, and he's setting his zenith. He's got a plumb bob, or a pendulum, or whatever, to set his vertical. Now obviously on their model, everybody's got a different vertical. But for this example, it doesn't matter, because this works for everybody on a ball, to a point. So at this point, Ruhif sets his vertical. And then you can see at this point, that the line is, it's, it's got an infinite distance. So the vertical is as far as you can imagine in the biggest number that you can ever imagine. It's not set to any particular distance. It's got a, it's got a direction, but it's got no magnitude. There's no quantification there. It's, in, it's a, an indefinite line. Let's move to slide two. What you then do is you want to measure the distance of the dotted line in time. So to measure that distance, because once you get a distance, right, because we all know we need an angle and two sides, or we need two angles and one side, or we need... In this instance, we're going to be using two angles on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance of the dotted line in time. So I don't mean time is in hours, minutes and seconds. I mean time is in arc, arc seconds, arc minutes. T 
time in this instance is applying the inverse trigonometric functions and you can see by this clip that these are used to obtain an angle from any of the angles trigonometric ratios inverse trigonometric functions are widely used in engineering navigation physics and geometry so this is essentially what's being applied at this point so we are measuring the distance of the dotted line as a length in time not in meters or kilometers miles kilometers anything like that this is measured in time so it's arc seconds arc minutes right once you get that distance you've got an angle from the observer you've now got a distance from the observer which is the dotted line but at this point it's the only two it's the only two values that you've got you need a third don't you but the moment you get your distance in time the dotted line once you measure that distance in time you then crop off the dis uh, the, the 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 values the infinite lines that we had before the infinite lines are no longer infinite once you get your distance in the dotted line you then get a 90 degree angle from your zenith your vertex of your zenith your highest point of your zenith you get a 90 degree angle from there so at this point we now have your angle from the observer, you have the distance measured in time, number two, and you have your 90 degree angle, number three. But you'll notice now that the lines are no longer infinite. The lines are now cropped because we now create a triangle, a celestial triangle in the sky, not against, not against the ground. And this is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. So at this point, kind of, ball earthers can get away with arguing that sextants work on a globe. But let there be no doubt, we do have the three values that we need. We've got the, the me number one, the, the, the measurement of the angle from the observer. Number two, the distance in time of the star to the zenith. And we've got number three, we've got the right angle 90 degree. And at that point, the trigonometry can be done. However, because on the sphere, on their model, this can't be done because of 7 over 6R, when the observer looks out to the star, whatever angle that is, that line, that optical line of sight through the sextant, look, imagine that you're looking down the barrel of the gun, you've got the sextant up to your eye, and you're looking out to that, that star. On their model, because light does not follow a, curve, a, a straight line, that means that this line from the observer to the star is a curve because of 7 over 6R. They cannot triangulate with a curve. They need three straight lines and they need angles. Well, that means that angle one cannot be achieved on their model because the line, the hypotenuse, is subject to a curve, 7 over 6R. So that angle cannot be measured from their perspective. The zenith is a straight line because that's where the only time where there's a straight line on their model. The zenith, the vertical from the observer. So the zenith is, is a straight line, but the hypotenuse, the, angle, the, the line out to the star, is a curve. Because everything's apparent in their perspective, according to their model. So they cannot do this. Now, Ruhif, you claim that I have got it wrong when I say that we measure the distance in time to get the value so that we can work out the distance to the star on Earth. When we look at the GP, the distance to the star along the horizon on Earth. Okay. Explain how I've got it wrong, please. With diagrams and showing how you can do it on a, on a ball. Because you guys can't do it on a ball. Everything's a curved line in your model apart from your vertical. So, curvilinear, you can't have it both ways. If you're going to apply curvilinear geometry, fine, sextants don't work on a sphere. If you're going to apply uh, Euclidean geometry, then that's fine as well but you've got to accept that you're 7 over 6 hours out the window. You can't have it both ways, gentlemen. So it's either Euclidean or curvilinear. If it's Euclidean, you can't have 7 over 6 hours. If it's, if, it's, you, you, if it's curvilinear, then you can't have sextants on a globe. But you can't have both positions at the same time. You're in a direct contradiction. This completely debunks your model because no matter which way you go from here, your model's over, guys. It's fucked. You're in a direct geometrical contradiction. You cannot get out of this. Look forward to your hate video, Rupif. Make sure you put in a couple of insults about how I can't triangle.